chosen me. Your love has called my name. And I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Good morning, Northbrook United Methodist Church. It's good to be with you this morning as we celebrate um, God's goodness and God's love in our midst, as we celebrate God's holy word this morning, and as we partake of the goodness of God's holy sacrament of communion this morning. Today, I am filming in LJ, Georgia, which is a place very um, special to my family. John has fallen in love with LJ, Georgia years and years ago, and we have a place here, and we celebrate as a family many of our most important days around this very table, which happens to be my grandmother's dining room table. As we take Holy Communion this, today, I want to invite you to have some type of bread and some type of juice so that we can celebrate together. And now, would you join me as we pray? Gracious and amazing God, we give you thanks for this Sunday, for the time that we can remember that we're yours and that you have great plans for us and great need of us to accomplish your plans on earth. May you open our Holy Spirit to be available to you and may this time of worship, this time of music and singing, prayer and remembering the Holy Scripture, may we be made more present for you and more on fire for your word. And we ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Let us join together in a new affirmation, one that our own Leslie Bowers wrote this week for us. Let us say these words together. We believe in one God, creator of all things, who is wise, powerful, and merciful. We believe that God is love. We believe in the sacrifice and example of Jesus, to love all, to serve all, and to value all. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God's presence within, God's guidance in all situations, and God's strength and help. We believe in the power of the empty grave, the power of faith, and the power of God. We believe in one God, God with us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Your 
Every week, I am so amazed by the continued generosity and faithfulness you show to the mission and ministry of Northbrook United Methodist Church, for the amazing ways you stepped up to give toward our emergency assistance fund, and for your faithfulness to your tithes and our offerings, even though we cannot be together. I cannot express my gratitude to you enough. Thank you for your faithful hearts. Thank you for the excitement and joy that you have for the future and what we will do together in ministry. As we come together for this time of offering, as I sit here um, in God's beautiful world, let us remember God's goodness and God's faithfulness as I celebrate today your faithfulness and your goodness.
reading for the reading of the scripture, the reading of God's word, we are reading from Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. Saturday evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome went out and purchased burial spices so that they could anoint the body of Jesus. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they were asking each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. The women were shocked, but the angel said, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you before he died. The women fled from the tomb, trembling and bewildered. And they said nothing to anyone because they were too frightened. The Word of God for the people of God. Before we enter into a time of communion, I wanted to tell you a story about a man who grew up in the church. His mom was the host of this small little house church in a pretty hostile area. I'm sure he grew up hearing the name of Jesus, hearing about the miracles, hearing about the life, death, and resurrection, these amazing stories. One day, he gets recruited. Some of the biggest preachers in the world recruit this kid because they think he can do what they can do. So he begins traveling with these epic preachers from city to city and town to town, sharing love and joy and peace in the midst of a pretty tough climate. At one point, this kid gets scared. He gets tired. He misses home. So in the midst of this trip that he was committed to, he leaves. He turns back and goes home. He deserts. He runs. In the midst of danger and hard work, he goes home. Now, a little later on, the kid realizes that he wants to go back. He wants to try again. And he meets with the two seasoned preachers. One of them says, no way. You deserted us when we needed you. You can't come. But the other preacher says, everyone deserves a second chance and a third chance, and a fourth chance, and so on. And because of the grace shown to this deserter, this kid gets to join back in, but these two preachers, they part ways. And so this kid comes to learn under the tutelage of this grace-filled, loving preacher, this preacher of second chances. Now, years later, this kid would make friends and work his way all the way to the leadership, and it is believed that he would sit at the feet of the Apostle Peter and take down the stories and notes and quotes and compile them together to write what is believed to be the earliest gospel called Mark. Of course, one of the most peculiar things of this kid named John Mark's gospel is that it ends at 168 with people running away, scared, not telling anyone. It ends in fear and uncertainty. It ends with a bunch of deserters. And I've always wondered why this kid, why John Mark, ended it this way. <laughs> did he get caught up with something more important? Did he have to go on the run? Or did he want to finish the story there? I don't know. Perhaps Mark ended his gospel with a bunch of deserters because he was one of those deserters. Perhaps he ended it there because he realized that he had made some mistakes. He had been just like the disciples and run in fear from the call. And perhaps he ended it there in verse 8 because anyone reading the gospel at the time of its writing around 70 AD would already know the end of the story. They would already know that a movement was taking hold the sudden ending of Mark would be a way of looking to a church living in fear, living on the run, and saying, look what God can do with a bunch of fearful deserters. I should know. I'm one of them. And if God can bring second chances, 
and new life and a fire-filled movement from a bunch of anxiety-filled runners. Think of what God can do with you, with me, with us. So, as we continue through the fear and the anxiety and the loneliness and the boredom, remember Mark, remember the disciples, remember their desertion, and remember that Mark ends his gospel in weakness in order that he might point to God's strength. And if God can do great things with a few people in fear and trembling, imagine what God can do with you and with me. May you be open to the Spirit. May you be open to God's call on your life. May you know that God is a God of second and third and fourth chances. And may you understand that God does God's best work when we are ready to throw in the towel and run. God is doing something right now in you and in me. So be ready. Let us pray. God, you are the God who calls the weak and makes them strong. God, in our weakness, may we come to know ourselves better. May we come to know each other better. And may we come to know you better. You are the God of Abraham, Moses, Ruth, Esther, Mary, Joseph, and John Mark. People who were not perfect but in weakness heard your call and said yes in whatever circumstance. And as we gather around your table today, O oh God, the ultimate means of your grace and the ultimate example of your power and weakness, may we hear your call. And may you use us to do your will in this world. In the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So may we remember that on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to God. And then he looked at his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. And then when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to God. And then he looked at his disciples and said, this is my blood, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And every time you drink of this, remember me, remember who you are that you are my beloved children, that you are part of the new covenant, the covenant of forgiveness and reconciliation. And so we ask now that the Holy Spirit would come upon us, would be with you where you sit and be here and make these be the body and blood of Christ for you and me so that we may be Christ for the world, the world that is so hungry for Jesus, so hungry for a place at the table hungry to belong, and desperately in need of forgiveness and new life. Let's pray together. Lord, we are so grateful for this sacrament, for the meaning and purpose that it has in our own lives, for the forgiveness you offer us, and for the reconciliation you have made possible. May we always know who we are. May we delight in the truth of being your child. And may we be transformed by the body and the blood of Christ. Amen. Because we who are many, we come from different paths, we come from different opinions and different perspectives. We who are many are part of one body, and that is the body of Christ that has been broken for us. And though we all are imperfect, we all have been made perfect in Jesus. And so this is the cup of the new covenant. It is the cup of forgiveness for you and for me. And so remember that this is the body of Christ that has been broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ that has been shed for you.
As we close, I want to say a special thank you to Shelly for her beautiful music today. And I'd like to encourage you to stay tuned as we have some, some updates on the life of our community as told by Connor and Lauren. This is something new and I hope you enjoy it. But as we end today, I hope you know how much God loves you and how much we love you. You have been called to live a life of goodness and mercy in whatever circumstance. So keep checking on one another, keep calling and texting, keep washing your hands and wearing masks, stay home and safe. But in all of that, know that before all of this, God called you to live into God's will. So keep living into that calling, even in the midst of social distancing. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.
Sunday Update. I'm Lauren Wagner. And I'm Connor King. We would like to spend some time recognizing our mothers. So if you have any photos of your mom or you with your kids that you would like included in our slideshow during the May 10th service, send the photos to Leslie by the end of the day. We can't wait to celebrate Mother's Day with you, or as many of you mothers call it, just give me one hour of peace and quiet day. <laughs> Last Sunday, our very own Andrew Chapel and Dead Winnie UMC's Alan Whitaker led us in an evening worship. It was a great opportunity for us all to worship from the comfort of our homes together with our families. In other news, this Sunday night, I'll be doing an hour-long live stream of my dog Milo. For a preview, here is 10 seconds of Milo. Isn't he so cute? Oh my goodness. Look at him go. He's just the sweetest little thing. <laughs> Love you, man. This is great. On May 17th, we will be recognizing our graduates during the service with a slideshow of all the photos their families have sent us. So join us in celebrating our seniors on Senior Recognition Sunday, and I promise we won't cancel this one. We promise we won't cancel. We will be hosting an Enneagram workshop online with Reverend Catherine Booth Olson. This will be a two-part workshop. The first session will be on May 6th, and the second session will be on May 13th. Both will be from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Go ahead and take the free Enneagram test that we have posted on the website, and we recommend that you read The Road Back to You. We will be having a virtual Memorial Day barbecue lunch on Sunday, May the 24th. Pre-order two pounds of pulled pork for $10 by May 14th. Half of that cost goes to our local supplier, From the Earth. Your order will be available from 12 to 2 p.m. on the 24th for pickup or delivery. And better yet, get together with some friends for a Zoom session and fellowship while eating. Which reminds me. Hey, Lauren. Hey, Connor. Knock, knock. Who's there? Pig. Pig who? Pick on someone your own size. Thank you for joining us here for the Sunday update. And live from Roswell, Georgia, it's Sunday morning!